So we want to find dy dx given this equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this entire equation and apply d with respect to x. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x. That's kind of the key. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of this whole thing. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is split this up. I'm going to rewrite this with the log rules. And you know that the log of a, of a product is equal to the sum of the logs, if you remember that rule. Yeah. And then we're just going to leave the right side as it was. Now I'm going to apply to the entire thing the derivative with respect to x. So when I apply that to ln of x, what's the derivative of ln of x? It's just 1 over x. What's the derivative of ln of y? Well, this isn't x, but y is a function of x we're assuming. So the, that's the chain rule. So it's the it's like saying, let's pretend like y was um, x squared plus 2x. How would you take the derivative of that? Notice you have a function inside of a function, right? If y was equal to that, this is just an example, by the way. I'm not saying that y is equal to that. But if y was equal, sorry, if y was equal to x squared plus 2x, then let's pretend like that's your y, then how would you take the derivative? Well. Wouldn't it just be 2x plus two? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I actually, the, the first thing I wrote was correct. If, let's say that this is your y. Let's say this is your y, okay, right there. So where I'm taking the natural log, how would you take the how would you take the derivative of this thing? If this was your function, I'm gonna have to call it u, not y, because it's a different function. How would you take the derivative of this with respect to x? Multiply it by y. It's the or chain rule. You would take the derivative of the outer function, which is the ln of y. Oh. So it's one over. So this is actually du dx that I'm doing here. This yeah, is this is actually rule, right? one over. This is 1 over x squared plus 2x times the derivative of this inside, which is 2x plus 2. So that's really what you're, how you're thinking of this problem right here. You're taking the derivative with respect to x, but you're taking it of a function that has y in it, not x in it. So what's the derivative of the ln of some function? It's 1 over that function times the derivative of that function with respect to x. You follow? Yeah. And then same thing on this side, I'm going to apply the dy dx. Well, what's the derivative of x over derivative of x? What's the dx over dx? 1. That's just 1. And what's dy over dx? y prime. It's just dy over dx or y yeah. prime. OK? So remember, what are we trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for dy dx. Well, there's my dy dx. Sometimes you'll see it written as y prime, but it's really dy dx, right? Yeah. So how do I solve now for dy dx? I put these on the same side of the equation, and I put anything that doesn't have it on the other side of the equation. So that's what I'm doing next. 1 over y dy dx. I kept that there. I'm moving this over, so I subtract it, right? So that's dy dx equals, I'm leaving this here, and I'm moving this to the other side, so I subtract it. Now I do, now I can factor out. Remember, I'm trying to solve for dy dx. That's what they asked, find dy dx. So I factor that out. So dy dx times 1 over y minus 1, because remember, there's a 1 holding. It's you got to hold that place there. Equals 1 minus 1 over x. See how I factor dy dx? Yeah. And now just... Um, multiply by the reciprocal of this thing to get dy dx by itself. So dy dx equals um, now there's a couple things you can do here. You might want to you might want to um, get common denominators before you do anything else or you can simplify it after the fact. It really doesn't matter so I'll do it this way. I'll do it like this. 1 over y minus 1. See how I divided by that? 
Yeah. This is a, you can leave it like that. Maybe your teacher might be okay with that, but technically you should probably simplify this. And remember how you simplify a compound fraction like this? Multiply the top and bottom by x, y, because that's your least common denominator. Okay. And when I do that, I get this multiplies here and gets me x, y. This multiplies by here and the x's cancel. So I just get minus y all over. This multiplies here and the y's cancel, so I just get x. And this multiplies by here and I get minus x, y. So that's your answer. Now, again, you could have simplified this differently, right? At this step, you could have got a common denominator. You could have rewritten this as x minus one over x. And you could have rewritten this as one minus y over y. And then when you, multiply, you flip and multiply, it's a little bit of a different thing, but you're gonna get down to the same answer.